Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of you know our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller played by Viola Davis. Viola Davis is gonna team up with members of Team Peacemaker, and this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it, and Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan, and we have a few other lanterns peppered in there, but this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they wanna fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes we're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is the story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, whereas Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. 
And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're gonna talk about, a very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I wanna be true to those stories. I wanna be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. So James Gunn just announced the new DC Phase 1 or DC Chapter 1 gods and monsters of their next 10 years of what they're calling the DCU, the DC Universe. So we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of new movies. They're rebooting everything. There's a bunch of TV series they announced. If you're brand new to the channel, of course, I'll be doing videos for all these new TV series, all the episodes, all the new movies that they're going to be doing, just like I do for all the other DC stuff. But the first big thing is they're calling it the DCU, not the DCEU anymore. And technically, there'll be a couple projects, like a couple movies and series before the true DCU, as James Gunn is calling it, picks up. Because like there are a couple movies coming out this year that are still set in the Snyderverse. Like you have Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which is coming out really shortly. I just did a bunch of trailer videos for that. Then we have the Flash movie in the summer, which is meant to reset the entire DCEU because they are doing a version of Flashpoint. Then the Blue Beetle movie will happen. Everybody's been pretty hype about that. And then Aquaman 2, The Lost Kingdom, at the end of the year. And that'll be the end of the Snyderverse Justice League line of movies. There are a couple DCEU-connected TV series that will happen on HBO before that, like Peacemaker spinoffs and such. I'll explain those in a second, but the first proper movie that they're releasing as part of the DCU will be the new Superman movie that he was hyping up a little while ago. It's titled Superman Legacy, release date July 11th, 2025. So that's like the official beginning of the new James Gunn DCU Chapter 1. They said it'd be heavily influenced by All-Star Superman, which confirms why he was reading that comic book and posted the picture a couple days ago. It'll be a completely new actor. It kind of explains why they are recasting Henry Cavill, because they want it to be like a Superman year two, or say earlier in his career, maybe not necessarily year two. The next big movie after that will be their new Batman movie called Batman the Brave and the Bold. Everybody remembering the Brave and the Bold TV series? It will be completely separate from Robert Pattinson's Batman movies. That'll be an Elseworlds story. And they are calling anything that's not directly connected to what they're calling the DCU true Elseworlds. And it'll be titled as such. They'll be recasting a different version of Batman. And it'll be a true live action Bat family focused mostly on his relationship with Damian Wayne. Like live action Damian Wayne finally. He said specifically it'd be influenced on Grant Morrison's run where he introduced Damian Wayne and called Damian his favorite Robin of all the Robins. But he said Bat Family, so that means that Nightwing is probably in it. Tim Drake is also probably in it somehow. Probably some of the other characters. It's a very big Bat Family. They announced they're doing a new Supergirl movie and it's called Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow based on Tom King's recent run. You can actually go read that comic book right now. It'll be inspired by that. They didn't say if it'd be the Sasha Calais version of Supergirl that they're introducing in the Flash movie or a completely new one, but they made it sound like it's going to be a completely new one. And they will just recast a new Supergirl when they get ready for that movie. But it won't come till well after the new Superman movie. The doing a new Swamp Thing movie is like a true horror movie inside the DCU that'll totally be very different from the other movies, but it'll still be connected to the larger DCU story that they're moving forward. They're doing a movie based on The Authority, which is actually a Wildstorm team, and it's primarily meant to bring the Wildstorm characters into the live-action DCU because they bought Jim Lee's Wildstorm comics a long time ago when they hired Jim Lee, or technically rehired him. This is like 20 plus years ago. And those Wildstorm characters have kind of been in this weird nebulous type of continuity where they tried to bring Wildstorm and integrate it with the DC universe. Now they're doing that in live action form. A lot of their characters are meant to be analogs of main DC characters, so we'll see how they treat them. But like James Gunn says, they're a team that thinks the world is broken and they're trying to fix it. For all the big TV series that they're doing, they're all meant to be big budget HBO series, kind of like Peacemaker was. The first new one as part of the DCU will be the new Green Lantern series called Lanterns, and it takes place mostly on Earth. It's going to be a buddy cop series, like True Detective in the DC Universe with Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. 
If you remember several years ago when they announced they were doing a Green Lantern Corps movie, people were like, why don't you just do True Detective in space? Turns out they're doing it, but as a big budget HBO series. Supposedly this is meant to be completely different from what Greg Berlanti was doing with his Green Lantern series with a bunch of other Green Lanterns. There will be other Lanterns on it, he said, but I think creatively there's just like a bunch of different people working on it now. There'll be a Peacemaker spinoff focused on Amanda Waller. He teased that a while ago. It's just called Waller right now. It sounds like they're treating it like Peacemaker Season 2 because it spins out of Peacemaker Season 1. Most of the Peacemaker characters will cross over into it. I don't know if this means that they're not doing Peacemaker Season 2 and they'll just do the Walla series or if they're also doing Peacemaker Season 2. He wasn't really clear about that. They're doing a Wonder Woman series, but it doesn't star Wonder Woman. It's called Paradise Lost and it'll be set before Wonder Woman is born on Themyscira and it'll be kind of like Game of Thrones in the DC Universe, but on Paradise Island. Wonder Woman was born about 5,000 years ago, so that gives you an idea for the timeline of when things take place during it. Now it kind of makes sense why they couldn't do Wonder Woman 3, why they canceled that movie and Patty Jenkins said there was no way forward for the story, like there was no way for them to work it out because their next big story with Wonder Woman takes place way before she was born. They're doing a Booster Gold series. They've been talking about doing a Booster Gold project, a movie, a TV series for a long time now. It's cool to see him finally get his due. And they're doing an animated Creature Commandos series with characters that will also cross over into live action, kind of like Marvel's What If series, where the characters are played by the movie actors as well. Creature Commandos was a team put together during World War II of a bunch of monsters called Project M. It started out with Frankenstein's monster, a vampire, and a werewolf, and then in present day they just continue cycling the roster with a bunch of different monsters. They did address the fate of Ezra Miller because there's been a lot of questions about whether or not they're getting rid of him or they're going to recast with a brand new Flash. They said they're basically waiting to announce what's happening with him until after he potentially makes it through rehab and a lot of his legal troubles. What I think that actually means is they're just waiting till after the Flash movie comes out to announce that they're going to recast him. Like long term, I do expect them to recast Ezra Miller. But that's the big news. Obviously, a huge thing is that they're starting off with a brand new Superman movie. And there's a couple holdover projects that are still kind of loosely connected to the Snyderverse. But for the most part, this year is the last like real year of the DCEU Snyderverse line of movies. And they're still doing the Robert Pattinson Batman movies. The Batman 2 is coming out in a couple years. They're still doing Joaquin Phoenix's Joker 2 coming out in a couple years. Like I said, that stuff they'll treat like Elseworlds, but they're not going to start doing a ton of Elseworlds stuff. Like there'll be a couple things here and there, Elseworlds. But for the most part, the whole idea here is that James Gunn, as he said in his video here, especially like at the very end, is that they wanted everything to be connected. Everyone also be sure to post all your reactions in the comments below. Like there's so many things to react to here. So obviously there's still lots of questions, lots of huge characters that they didn't talk about, like what's going to happen with Aquaman because Jason Momoa made it sound like he's going to continue being Aquaman, but he didn't mention Aquaman or The Flash, for instance, or even the Shazam characters or Blue Beetle for that matter. What's going to happen to them after the events of their movies? A lot of that, I think they're just waiting to announce so that they don't throw water on any of the big releases. Like they want the movies to earn as much money as possible. So like, okay, we'll just kind of put them to be determined. Ultimately, though, I think a lot of them will be recast. There will probably be a couple characters that will continue on, though. Jason Momoa seems very confident that he will continue as Aquaman, but also other characters like Lobo, for instance. I've already done a couple other videos about the project they've announced so far and what's happening with some of the other people like Henry Cavill doing his new Warhammer series. You can click here for that new Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer and learn what's going on with him the next couple of years. And click here for my brand new Flash trailer and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.